My mind said walk in front of a bus. I couldn't do it. Moments where I'm up all night, where I'm crying all night. It gets really rough and it gets lonely and dark. For somebody that's hurting and grieving, how do you get through it? My seven-year-old, she she prays with me. By looking through her, I have to stay alive. Build a sister circle of people that understand what you're going through. And so this is why therapy is important, because it helps you make sense of understanding that nothing that happened to you is your fault. I have been down the track of trying to find therapists. If you could help like navigate some of the things we should look at. Start with solutions-based therapists because you need to recognize where you are and not just process where you've been. People are actually hungry to do some deep healing, to heal that generational trauma. For me, after the podcast, knowing that as people out there that can relate to what I'm going through and that feels the same kind of hurt that I'm feeling, strong, strong is not a trigger. I wear it, so it's a badge of honor for me now. It honestly made me realize my hurt wasn't in vain and I'm not a victim. When I look at the comments, through your tragedy and pain, people are saying that you're the hero. And then if you lose a child to domestic violence, it's, it's rough. My name is Diana Thomas. I'm the grief coach. So I came up with this Diana's grief method and the way that I acknowledge what has happened to me. You need to navigate grief. It's not something that you ever get over. It's continual. It comes up in your mind at odd places, smells, tastes. Then it's acknowledgement so that we can say that I am not okay. And it's okay to not be okay. I'm busy loving myself, putting me first. Now that I know I deserve more, I'm busy loving myself, putting me first. Made up my mind, I'm on my grind. My time to shine, you hit my line. I press decline, no time for that. I'm moving for what I'm right now. You're in my past, I've come too far to turn back now. Not going back, I see that everybody's sleeping on me. They really gotta see it to believe. All right, y'all, welcome back to I Love Me More, the reunion show. Y'all, let me just tell you something. This is where I would be sitting on the stage, flabbergasted on our set at the stories of you three beautiful women, the conflict, the ups and downs. It had me at the edge of my seat. I didn't know what was going on, but it was it was it was transformative to to watch each one of you and your journey, where you guys started, where you ended up, as well as just what you've been through, right? And I think that it would be amazing if you guys could talk about your life after incarceration. First, we got to do the recap for those that didn't see or wasn't sure, right? So um, we started off with Keisha, and I always want to call you Perkins, but you're really Ellis now, so I got to get this thing right. Well, she was Keisha Perkins when I met her. Um, Many of y'all know my story that I spent close to a decade in federal prison, and Keisha was actually the overseer of the prison that I was in. So she was the one in charge of everything, whether it was going to happen or not. Keisha was the deciding factor of it. And it was inmate, you know, officer. And somewhere along the lines, we crossed the lines. And that became my sister and my friend. And we had a really, really, really powerful relationship with each other until Keisha got caught up and she actually ended up becoming an inmate. So she went from being an officer to an inmate. Right. And we shared that story. If you ain't watched the podcast, you got to go on back to what yeah. was that episode two. two. And All right. then there was Miss Aisha Hall, like just to sit and talk to you and just to know how smart you are was just like, I think that was one of the things we talked about forever. Right. I was just like, just for you to be able to be in that space and talk about it, because I don't think if you were there, people would know. Uh, just your level of intelligence, your how, how you your ability to write, just all of these wonderful things. But it got juicy, y'all, because these two started out as friends, and something happened, and it got ugly, right? And uh, while we were filming the podcast, I thought I was gonna have to jump in between and hug both of them because the tears that came to when when you have to really hash out what's going on is ugly sometimes, and to watch you guys do that. And and all the the backlash that came after that episode aired, but to know that you guys were able to mend this relationship after that day is like one of the most beautiful things. I just want to say, in fact, Aisha was the closest person that I had a relationship with in prison. Right, I knew a lot of people, I loved a lot of people, but we in fact had the closest relationship. 
and we fell out as friends and it was traumatic for me, right? And for me, it was like, I'm not talking to that girl. I'm not, uh, 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 all of the things, right? And I felt like I was healed until she sat next to me and I had to relive those things. And even in her interaction with me, I realized I missed my friend. So it was all of those things happening. So y'all saw me on that episode, fall out on the phone most one time, roll over. It was deep because it was real emotions and it was real things. But what I'm proud to say, and I'm going to let her talk, is that we have mended our friendship, right? And we begin to heal. And in that healing process, it actually has helped me to become a better person. So I'm grateful for the love seat and grateful for you being here. So how was it for y'all after coming on our Love Me More podcast? What was that? What was the experience? What was it like? What did you feel? I guess we can start with you, Keisha. Well, for me, I think it was very liberating. I uh, I told Jamila it was just like a breath of fresh air. That was my first time ever sharing the story and the time that it has happened. And she was the only one who was able to get me to be brazen enough to be able to speak and talk about it and speak what happened, not be ashamed about it. And now I just think, you know, I just, I feel free from it. I have been, uh, I feel better. You know what I mean? I feel better about myself. I feel better about what happened. I feel better with the direction that I'm going in my life. You know what I mean? I think that was to Jamila for allowing me to, you know, to feel like she gave me a, a comfortable space. And you as well, Tara. I think that, you know, when we talked about it. Um, it was just a space that I was comfortable and was able to share it. And, you know, I hold back, I held back a lot of tears, but. You know, inside I was really crying, but as I was letting it out, I was, you know, definitely felt a lot better. And for me, it felt good because she got set up. The lady ain't do nothing wrong. The lady was never supposed to go to jail. And she held it, not saying what really happened. So people was looking at her like she did something that she didn't do. So what I thought was dope was that the podcast gave her an opportunity to share her side of the story. So could you tell them about some of those calls you got after you shared your side? Because before it was just the government side, which mm -hmm. wasn't no side because they had mush on their face and had to kind of make something out of something that really wasn't nothing. So how did you feel for those old coworkers and friends and people who thought it was something to call you and be like, wow, I'm sorry, let me get this thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was. I mean, you didn't know about no, that. No, I didn't know about that. I think it was. That's what we hear. Yeah. That period. It was, uh, it was, a, it was good and bad. You know, I received a lot of inboxes. I received a lot of phone calls. People were like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that happened. And again, as Jamila said, you only heard the government side of the story. You only heard, you saw or read in the papers of the stories being embellished and, you know, and all that. So to hear my story and for me to tell the story and have somebody who was there who was walking through the whole time that was happening it was like wow she really did not do that it my only guilty thing about it was I had engaged in the conversation with someone and by me doing that it cost me uh time in prison so um uh, that was my you know I failed to report to public officials as a public official that was my charge um so but the cause came through I had one guy who uh was a former lieutenant he has a podcast wanted me to do uh his podcast and I'm like Oh, please. I, I think also what we're missing is is how they shunned you and how these same people did not call to check on her, did not call to check on her children. She was going through this and she was going through it alone around the people that she saw every single day. And, 20 years, yes. right? And for her to be brave enough to share her side of the story um, and now... And I tell you, I mean, you know, it's, it's so that Tara says that, you know, when, when Jamila sent me the date today to say about, um, you know, we talk about my story here. And I said to her, I said, oh, I, you know, is it okay for me to bring my family to because these are people who's here with me today who stood by me and went through. On top of that, on them, you know, the people who are here with me today, Jamila. Jamila was the only person. Jamila was ready to go to hell and high waters back in that institution. I just have to get uh, messages to her like, yo, please. Tell her to relax. Tell her I'm okay. So she was she was turning the prison upside down. Put her in sick. My sister's innocent. You know I love her. And she'll tell you. And I and I mean I don't want to speak for her, but she'll tell you when Jamila got sentenced to her 12 and a half years. She'll tell you she didn't cry. But when they told her that that Friday when they got the call or got the message back to the institution that I had got arrested, 
You know, I mean, I'll let her tell that side of it. I cried like a newborn baby, right? Because it was me. I could deal with me. I'm like, she ain't built. What are we doing? No. It was just all bad. And for me to know that she didn't do it and then to watch the girl sleep on the other side of the bed that set her up, it was all bad. It was all bad. We really been through something. And I think um, going back to Aisha, one of the things I'm hoping and praying is she's a phenomenal writer that we do is talk about life for women in prison. I don't think that there's anything oh, well. that's ever been written or featured a film to kind of really show what we experienced and what that really looks like, but we experienced it together. So, and speaking of Aisha, Aisha, how did you feel after the episode and us getting back together and all the all all the craziness and the good stuff and all of it combined? I don't even know where to start. <laughs> um, well, but even as you were, just really quickly as you were telling your story, this is what I'm saying, right? You know those people that are just super smart in class and they like the A plus kids, right? That's Aisha. Like, it, it's just unbelievable, you know, and and not because not not because it's unbelievable that you can't do it. But it's like your first time being that close to somebody who's that smart. And I think that's I what it is. I agree with you. Like, um, yes. I I known about Aisha through Jamila and I started following you on Instagram. And I'll tell you, I get up there and sometimes like, wow, you know, I'm I'm, I'm amazed at you. I mean, <laughs> I, I tell you and then I tell you, no one takes the place of Jamila. Jamila, I'd say, is just her mind is so crazy but you know when i watch you on instagram i say that yeah i'm definitely oh thank you, you. Know, thank you both big bite. thank you wow like um when i when i got the call from jamila you know it was like whew, it was like a relief it was like you know um the forgiveness was in her heart you know and the i, I would always reach out she 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 was she was she was, she was not even feeling me <laughs> But I would go, hey, how you doing, sis? You know, okay, talk to you later. You know, I got my quick one, two, one, two. You know, but then that call really was Glad like, you did that because that showed that you love me. You know, yeah, when, absolutely. one thing about people is like when you stop giving them stuff or stop being, a, you know, they just, but you stay consistent. That's what made me know that you really cared about me. More than care, love, you know. Wow. And, um, you know, when I'm, found Jamila, it's like I found my tribe, you know, that passion, um, that intellect, you know, that creativity, you know, everything that I did, she did. I'm like, you know, I rap. She like, me too. And she bust a verse. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, like damn. Yeah, I'm a little bit of me asking me for a ride. What you Definitely. Doing? We walk in the yard and she's rapping and we got like, oh, shoot. So, you know, we're going back and forth with that. And then I'm talking about, you know, my authorship and she's talking about her books. You know, I'm writing books in the double digits. You know, I'm writing 10, 15 books and she's writing 20. I'm like, this girl, we are just from the same tribe, cut from the same cloth. So the connection was was instantaneous and it was very passionate, you know. Um, the people that didn't know us personally thought we were girlfriends. You know, they were like, they go to them girls, they, they argue in the game. Like, oh. <laughs> well, well, now a lot of the girls is gay for the state. Gay I guess the they, state. We was gay for the they state. Thought, they definitely did because we were so passionate. And I remember um, I invited you to a meeting that we had, you know, in the prison. It was just about like reform and what we were going to do when we got out. And to hear her speak, it was like I was so moved by the passion and just the way that she took over the room and what we're doing right now was literally what she spoke about back then. It's like, I have a different experience. Everyone else, they could look at her and say, oh, you know, she's so amazing. But I was there when this was being birthed, you know, the idea of it behind prison walls, you know, when people are expecting you to just fail and succumb to your circumstances and your pain and your trauma and just be nothing, you know, there's no real support for women like us, you know, and she also reminded me that when you're a boss, you're a boss anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are, you know? So she exemplified that. You exemplified that too. And then today we have in the audience, we'd be re remiss if we didn't give a shout out to our sister, Shawana. Shawana, where you at in the oh, building? Shawana had the her babysitter. Shawana yeah, she had to leave. Oh man, I want to give a shout out to Shawana because Shawana was actually the individual that connected us together. 
um, I was in Danbury. She was like, yo, you know, your, your case, you, my other sister, she got the $15 million case. Yo, y'all remind me of each other. So I went to, <laughs> to, to, to um, Alderson looking for you. And I was like the girl at Danbury, because, you know, a lot of, I got a lot of power from Keisha, because Keisha was the person who had the control of the building, and Keisha was the holy. You know what I mean? So I go in the holy office. I'm like, look, I'm, I'm going to need you to move such and such. She acted up at night. I'm going to need her to get up out of here. Yo, they messing with the old people. <laughs> they messing with the old people, Keisha. They taking their stuff. Keisha like, ah, right, yo, we got to go up in there and bust it up. Boom, boom, lock down. Everybody lock it down. So people used to be so mad at me because I was controlling the prison because I had the, had the people on stage, right? So it's crazy, but Aisha had it like how I had it in Danbury. She had it like that in Alderson. So when I went to the new prison, Aisha had me laid out. Like, Aisha was the big homie on the compound. So I came under Aisha, and I was good. Like, yo, what up? <laughs> prison culture is really something else, and it's not the same for the girls and the boys, because, you know, the, the boys don't really mess with the guards, right? But I guess maybe they have to if they're getting them phones and stuff in here. <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. They might have to mess with him a little bit, but it might not be open like how our, our relationship. You know, there's that females can be a little bit more, you know, um, intimate with each other as far as how they talk, you know, how they um, how they interact with each other. Sorry about that. And, um, you know, so it's very different, the male and female dynamic in prison. But, you know, me and Jamila, I mean, we just took over all the, the whole company. It, it was crazy. Immediately. Yes. You know, we actually got the world, I would say, to look at women in prison differently. Um, the way that we were able to go viral from from prison, the way we were able to um, help other women become entrepreneurs before they even came home. Um, we, we did a lot. We did a lot together, a lot. And, um, you know, where the breakdown happened is where everybody was like kind of shocked, I think, because. When we left prison, I don't know if anybody understands how prison works. Um, when you're in prison, that relationship is very different than your friends at home. You can have a best friend and not really know them. You can have a best friend in this world and you don't really know them because when you separate and they go home and you go home, you have separate lives. That doesn't exist in prison. You are with this person 24-7. You eat together, shower, walk the yard, cry. Um, you are constantly with this person. So you know people who are incarcerated with you more than you know people that you're home with. And that's why the relationship got so intense because we knew every part of our daily life, you know, because you might have a friend at home and she don't brush her teeth. You don't know. But in the but in prison, you're going to know. You're definitely going to know that. <laughs> you know everything. Good, good well about that. <laughs> you know everything. So um, when I came home, uh, Jamila really helped me in a way where nobody else could. I mean, she understood what was needed, right? You, you, you come home and you're a powerhouse to everyone else, but losing everything you have, you can go through feeling like almost nothing. You know, like uh, the term she coined, buried alive. You know, you really are. I came home with nothing, nothing, not even a pair of shoes, um, or the ones that I had on my feet. You know, no panties, no, no socks, no nothing. And uh, I always uh, like to, I said on the podcast, you know, Jamila came across this credit card. I don't know how she got it. Who gave it to her? Where she got it from? My best friend. Oh, okay. Okay. Else. So shout out to her. Um, and Jamila, you know, shared that card with me and took me shopping. And that's how I got my, you know, my first set of clothes. You know, she came from her looking out, you know. And then she said, don't worry, girl. Like I was walking. I was getting on a train, walking in the cold. You know, and I, I was a very successful person. I made millions of dollars. So it was extremely humbling to have nothing. Jamila said, don't worry, I got you. Best friend got she you. called best the best friend. friend. Came and sat side for the bins. Like, I right. And that's my first car out of prison. You know, uh, bins. You know, because. <laughs> Let's clap it up for the best friend. Clap it up the for the best friend. friend. The good credit. <laughs> Cause that's what we did. I'm like, yo, yeah. see, we brought. She like, we, she good. We good. I right, sis, we, we, we paperwork. Let's go. Yeah, that's, that's what that's... we did. We was riding for each other. We loved each other so much. So I want to apologize. You apologize to me on the last show. I want to apologize to you because we had so much, and I should have never ever allowed. Regardless of what happened, we could have worked and communicated it through that. So I want to tell anybody out there, if you got that friend that y'all was real, real good friends and y'all not friends no more, you still looking at the phone and you still rolling your eyes, <laughs> that means you still feeling something. 
because something is unresolved. So what Aisha taught me is that by loving and forgiving, right, you heal. And you helped to heal me, so I'm grateful for that, sis. Oh, my God. Th this is exactly why when they were when we were filming the podcast, deep down you're rooting for them because you see the passion and the love and the tears and what they had gone through, and you know that they are like-minded, so like-minded, that you're rooting that they find their way. And and it also shows that, again, that we are still doing this work and we also need healing and, and we have to work on ourselves. And to see this moment just full circle is amazing. And why we do this, you know, so. But it, it wasn't, amazing. it was not, you know, I will say this. After the show aired, you know, everyone is not happy about the union. Everybody is just, is not. And for whatever reason, and that's, they're right, you know. But I just want to say that as a grown woman, you know, my advice is if you love someone or care about someone, you cannot worry about what anybody else thinks or anybody else says. You have to follow your heart. You know, those people that say, oh, don't speak to them because I don't. Don't speak to this. You know, if you don't feel a negative energy for that person because they've done something to you, I mean, you can stay quiet, but you don't have to be nasty, you know. So as, as an adult, you have to use your own discernment. You have to use, um, you know, and there was a lot of, we didn't come home just by ourselves. You know, there was a lot of us. It was a, it was a group of us. And it kind of fell apart. And I felt bad because women have such a bad reputation of being able to stay together. And I did not want to be that. I did not want to be that statistic. But I will say in our defense, if you never did double digits in prison, if you don't understand what it's like to have to rebuild your life from, from scratch and the stresses that can come along with that. And the losses, I lost my father when I was away. I lost my brother when I was away. I lost a lot. And, you know, you're trying to rebuild your life. You're not going to be the most perfect person. And I've learned to be okay with that and to forgive myself. Because at the end of the day, you know, I was like, Dad, you know, did I mess this friendship up? What did I do? You know, because at the end of the day, is anything really that serious to not be able to connect and to speak with someone who has you know, done a lot for you and who has been a good friend. We've been good friends to each other, but I'm speaking on what she's done for me, you know. And I thought about it and it would bother me, but then I also thought about, well, you know, I was too judgmental on myself and, you know, I could have went harder. So I'm just saying that when you go through something like that, if you have a love in you, that love is there for a reason and you should express it. And don't let anyone or anything stop you from expressing it. Because, you know, you don't know if tomorrow's going to be here or not. You don't want to live in regret. So I just want to say that I am um, happy that I was able to forgive myself for what I went through. And even though I feel like sometimes we weren't making the best judgment calls, that it was okay to figure out life after being locked up for so long and having to rebuild. And the fact that we were able to actually do it and see Jamila get her doctorate. She talked about that in prison. She started studying for that in prison to see it really happen. It's like, wow, you know, we, we plant these seeds. You know, we plant these seeds and then we watch these seeds grow. And sometimes we can criticize it, look back on it. Hindsight is always twenty twenty, But allow yourself grace to correct yourself. And there's nothing that anybody can say about that. You know, there's nothing anybody can say about that. So in closing, because again, Tara couldn't say much to y'all. And people was like, why Tara ain't She don't know the story. Tara can't talk about it. Cause she <laughs> like, I was like, what? 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 But I got a door story. story. What I want to say to both of y'all is I'm committed to being a better friend. My first few years of coming home, I wanted to complete my task on earth. Like it was important to me for my maker to say job well done. I think if I leave here today, he'll say that. So I want to go back to being a better friend to you, Keisha. I see so much in you. I know all the amazing things that you're trying to do in Connecticut. I know you call me and I know I'll be like, all right, all right, but I'm coming. Okay, I'm committed to coming to helping you build that brand that you built in Connecticut because I know it's super big and I know God got a super bright, amazing destiny for you. And friend, I know the intellectual side. You got the rap side. You got the people for that. <laughs> but the intellectual side of you, Larry and the Linden Lion. Yes, thank you so much. If you guys did not see Larry, the Linden Lion, Jamila um, connected me with some schools in Brooklyn and my um, children's program for financial literacy. I did it in the schools with my life-size character, Larry the Lender Lion, teaching amazing. the kids credit, banking, you know, teaching them about interest, teaching them all the She's basic things they intellect. need. You know? I'm committed, friend, to whatever uh, resources thank you. I Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you, and we just... Thank you. Thank you. I love this. 
All right, stay love tuned when we conclude the last segment of I Love Me More Reunion. We'll be right back. back. Hello, friends. It's your girl, Dr. Jamila T. Davis, and I have a special announcement. We are finally opening up the Black Women's Lives Matter community. So what does that mean in real time? We can fellowship with you. We have this platform that we're giving to you for absolutely free. And it's a place where you can learn from other black women just like you. And we're gonna be learning real things, speaking to experts about finances, relationships, fashion, makeup, parenting, you name it, we got it in the community. It's a place that we can fellowship and also heal. We're also going to be having therapy in the community. There's a lot of things that we need to talk about to get off our chest, you know, and we're going to do it in a safe place where we can learn from experts about how to maximize our potential and become the best us that we can possibly be. So what does this mean? It's time to click the link in our bio and join today. It is absolutely free. It costs you nothing <laughs> and it will grow you so much, I promise you. So meet me in the community. You get to actually work with me this year. I'm going to be doing some one-on-ones. I'm going to be doing some group work and it's all about leveling up. Meet me in the community. I'll see you soon. And y'all already know what it is. It's going down. I love me more the reunion and we are sitting and talking with a lot of the guests that we've had on the show and this is our segment on relationships and you know uh sometimes when people are talking about their significant other um we don't get a chance to talk to them so the for we had Aaliyah on our show and you know she was sharing with us some of her relationship and now we get a chance to really sit and talk with Tut and he's gonna be sitting in the hot seat today instead of the love seat it's the hot seat so couples are so important, right? Because we need each other to survive. And oftentimes our communication barriers, sometimes it's different things. And then we're talking about trauma. How do you have a relationship when you're broken? Because sometimes I learned the hard way that two halves don't really make a whole, right? So one of the things that I've done on I Love Me More was bring on my significant other, who you'll hear from a little bit later on as well. So Aaliyah was brave enough Cause you know, this is brave stuff now, you know, oh. cause after baby, after that episode, we'll talk about that later, but we had to talk after that episode and it, it, it wasn't pretty, but anyway, um, I felt like you guys were brave and for you to be willing to open up and share about trauma and healing and how you heal through rough times. I think that's good. And then we have our therapist on, so we're not just talking cause you know, y'all, y'all been saying we're doing a lot of talking now we're going to be working on healing. So she's going to give us some pointers about how you heal do the rough stuff and how you help folks who have trauma be able to get through it in relationships. So I'm glad to talk about it. So first, for those that don't remember Aaliyah, Aaliyah's episode was about her being a star basketball player, losing that career and then trying to find herself and often finding herself in men. You know, now she has someone that she loves and they're very similar to me and Angelo. You guys are like community activists doing amazing things in the community. But we know everything that's rosy on the outside always is not like that on the inside. So let's talk about that. What does life look like for you guys now? And what are some of the things that you would like to be able to receive or to hear from the therapist today? Well, first and foremost, everything that I said on that podcast, he's not that person. He's not the one that I was wait, wait, talking here. about. That wasn't our brother. Okay. Yeah, right, right. This is my partner. This is who we are. New Direction is who we are, the brand. This is what we do. Um, I was gracious enough to actually meet this man because I was at a point in my life where I didn't understand my direction or where I needed to go. But Khalil came into my life in a point where it was like, okay, he had his stuff to go together for New Direction. And then he said, you know what? I see something in you. I see a little activist in you. I see some strength in you. But he didn't know behind him strength was a lot of pain. So a lot of things that I went through, he didn't know, but he's suffering from my trauma. So we began to, I learned his pain. And I didn't know until recently that we were trauma bonded. I didn't know we was trauma bonded. And someone told me that they was like, oh, you guys was trauma bonded. So we was relating to different situations and circumstances that we went through. So now I'm understanding who I am as an individual with my purpose in life, where I deserve, where I should be, 
what should I be doing in life? And he actually helped me to that because I really didn't know. I was like, I, I know somebody, but I don't know where I'm supposed to go, where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to do. Because when you lose it all, like many of you other ladies, when you lose it all, you don't know where your next step at. You don't sometimes even know where your next meal at. And if you read my, saw my episode, oh, I had the Tahoes, the Cadillacs, the Mercedes, the name, you name it. I rented them because I had to keep that image up of who I was when people saw me knowing that I was drowning and dying inside. But when I met him, he helped me to revamp, revise, and I got all of those things for real now. Wrap it up. So, my brother, I want to ask you a question. What was it, what is it like dealing with an alpha female? Like, what, what, how is life like? I mean, this is a real thing, right? Yeah, so um, you're dealing with an alpha female. It's always going to be a difficult process for any man because, like, men, you know, we like to be in control and, you know, we leaders at heart, you know what I mean, a lot of real men. So we want to be able to lead and have things a certain way, but then when you run into somebody that's similar to you and is a leader that had that same, you know, energy, you know what I mean, it, get, it gets rough for you because you don't want, you know, somebody that you're dealing with, like your significant other on the front line of, you know, doing work, especially with the community work we do. You know, man, it's, it, it gets dangerous at times because you got to go into certain areas and be in certain things. But she had that heart to do it, you know. And um, and I was just trying to figure out how you how you can manage dealing with a, a, a your personal relationship with the work, you know, because the work is different. And, and you know, I, I'm kind of like married to the work, you know. What I mean, I I, I I believe in it, and, and I know she believe in it too, and she believe in what I'm doing and what I'm pushing. But trying to you know implement that with a relationship and. You know, and her being who she is with, you know, her being an alpha female, it, it gets very, very difficult. But you just got to have patience, you know what I mean, understand it. Now, Aaliyah, question for you. What is it like dealing with someone who spent over a decade in prison and now you guys are in an intimate partnership with each other? What is that like for you as a female? It's very hard because I never had a, a, a partner who went to jail for 15 years. So it's really extremely hard. I don't understand. I didn't understand what he needed from me. I didn't understand what he wanted from me. I'm thinking I'm doing everything right. But all he ever asked me for was peace. And it's hard to give him that because all of my trauma, everything I've been through, everything I went through, I kind of bestowed it on him. But now I'm learning, you know, through others and my sister circle and different individuals who've been to jail for like 15 to 20 years because he did, he been in jail his entire life in and out, but 15 strong years he did. So coming out of there and having to deal with guards coming over, you know, telling you what to do 24 seven, all in your face, you know, him coming home, he actually wanted to just be free y'all. He wanted to be able to be free to understand himself, learn himself. He wanted to have his first apartment by himself. He wanted to do a lot of things by himself. But when I came in, I came with instruction. I came with a manual. I came with forcing him to be, or not forcing him because you can't force him to do anything, but I came with, um, this is what I want and this is what it's gonna be. He was not ready to give it to me. You have to learn your partner. You have to learn his needs and his wants if you want a partnership. Because it took for me to actually be in this type of relationship to realize like, wow, they have real trauma. They got real issues. They got real problems and I can't help them, doc. You know, I only can help with the things that I can help with. Mentally, I can't help him at all. And you have to be strong enough. You can want to be with a man so much, ladies. But you have to be strong enough to say, I can't help him in certain areas. And I want to be that, that doctor, but I can't be a doc. You know, I want to be strong for him. I want to be that person for him. But that's why I need help. That's why I'm telling you guys I need therapy is because she's going to in, embark in a journey with me to open up how I can help myself first and then be able to help him. All right, y'all. So we are back, and I told y'all I had another special guest. So, babe, I was talking a little bit about you when he wasn't here. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> and it gets rough sometimes, right? Yeah. So we got the therapist today, which That's I'm great. excited about. Uh. <laughs> and she's going to help all of us, right? So um, Aaliyah is also my friend in real life. So we actually share and talk. And I felt like this conversation was going to be helpful because a lot of times we don't know how to navigate through our relationships with men. Y'all be having different feelings than us. We don't feel the same. 
you know, and after that podcast, y'all, y'all don't even know. Angelo came to the after chat. The little, some of the people's in the audience, they, Uh-oh. baby, they came Uh-oh. after my. They didn't come after me, but <laughs> things happen. It got rough <laughs> up in come the community. They, they, they was going after themselves. That's what they were doing. But it was so crazy because women view things differently than men view them, right? Like, if we could be seeing the same thing, but y'all view it one way and then we view it another way. And we know at times that it's difficult. And I know I'm a little, di- I'm a little different, just a little bit. You said what? And-, <laughs> <laughs> and I know I have trauma, Doc. I got real trauma. So, but he got trauma too. So let's. I don't know about that. that. I think I think I don't think there's an issue with people seeing things in different ways. That's not my issue with people or in general. I think the issue is how you express that. A lot of. No one sees things the same way as usually, but the question is, can you express that? Like when I was on the call, it was like, can you express how you feel in a healthy way? Or are you going to express how you feel in a way that now I may feel like I have to shoot back? Or could we have a different kind of environment where we're sharing how we feel differently to create a space for both of our perspectives to coexist? Because I'm never expecting someone to feel how I feel. I'm just expecting you to share how you feel in an honorable way. And now I could share how I feel in an honorable way. And hopefully we could create a space where those two different perspectives can coexist and not be at war. When you trigger in my trauma, how you expect me to say? So you, so you want to go to war. <laughs> okay. All right, let me help y'all. Let me help y'all. Right, j- jump in, Doc. Please. Because I had to do it alone one time. <laughs> Life and death. <laughs> Life and death. So here's the thing. You know, as couples, what we all have to recognize is that you cannot use brute force in order to be heard, right? And so, ladies, we're sisters, and I love you. But we right. got to drop that alpha female routine as it relates to your relationship. Right. Okay? Why are you clapping? All right? Because, She's a therapist. Because I need you. I need you. <laughs> right? And listen, and so many sisters do it. So many sisters do it. I used to do it, right? I'm a reformed, right? Right. Right? I used to do it. But you have to realize that the same skills that make you successful in life and make you a boss and all those things, right, are the same exact skills that will ruin your relationship. Right. Okay? So it's being able to understand Mm -hmm. when you have to take that off, right? So what I say is have a ritual, Right. So even if it's coming in the house, you know, taking off your boss clothes and putting your robe on so that your mind has a transition from what you were just doing to now you're at home. Right. So that you can respond in a way that your family can hear. Right. Because the way you we have to realize something as women, ladies, we are the heartbeat of the home. Say that. Right. We set the temperature of the home. And so if things are awry, it's going to be felt by the partners. It's going to be felt by the children. It's going to be felt by extended family members. So it's your responsibility, right? So I have to hold you accountable to that, right, to be able to maneuver differently. Now, fellas, now it's your turn, right? You were doing good. (laughs) That's all about stuff, right? Right, right. So here's the thing. Oftentimes what we don't realize in relationships is that women speak in process, right? Men think. And process, right? So sometimes your silence, fellas, you're just processing, right? You're thinking about what's being said and what's happening. But to a woman, it's like you shut down, you're ignoring them, you're not paying attention. So it's important just to verbalize, all right, I heard you. I needed some time to process. Oftentimes that little filler statement will make the difference in the interaction, right? But I want you guys, I want to say that one more time because I think it will help heal so many relationships. Women speak in process, right? If someone said, I'm going to give Jamila, Dr. Letitia, and Tara a billion dollars to talk about makeup, we could do it. We could do it Let's and not go. stop, Let's right? See. Right? But a guy, that's not his strong suit. He's going to be like, oh, okay, I don't know, right? No matter what it is, right? Because they process as they think. So, ladies, give your partner that space to process the way they process. Don't need that instant validation, right? Very I think important. a lot of women shut yeah. down, too, though. But and the they sh- stop the talking. Shutdown, the shutdown is different, and that's the game plan, right? So that's the silent treatment behavior, right? That's the I'm going to make you hear me behavior. And so when I see that, I'm able to pinpoint exactly when that person was traumatized and abused the first time or hurt the first time, right? How you act when you fight lets you know what age your trauma started. Okay? Okay? 
Whoa, well, baby. Dang. <laughs> you want to suck, I'm, right? I have a question, right? So what happened? I think, I mean, yeah, baby, we just talking, right? So we want <laughs> so, to save space. And so it's not. Oh, that before. I think my problem comes because, you know, we love each other. But sometimes I don't like your responses to me. Because if you talk crazy to me or seem crazy, I'm going to get crazy. too. So we all crazy, right? So I think, like, what do you do when you feel like, you know, I know you said, you know, put the boss, put the robe on. I heard you. But now. Not really. I, I, I did. She don't like it, y'all. She didn't hear you. Huh? What, Tell her again. What happens when your spouse isn't as compassionate with you? Okay, so let's talk about that. So the first thing we have to recognize, right, is that we have to extend grace in our relationships, right? Relationships, because I, I need to say that word again, right? You have yeah. to extend grace in our relationships to our partners as well as to ourselves, right? Oftentimes, we don't extend that grace because we're looking for our partner to meet a need, and it's an unspoken one, right? It's an unspoken need that they don't know anything about, right? So whether that's validation, whether that's warmth, whether that's comfort, whether that's support, they don't know it, right? And so you're speaking, you're saying something. He was like, oh, okay. And you're like, what would you mean? Oh, okay, right? Like, because you're not feeling seen and heard. Right. So it's understanding that in a relationship, you have to be willing to take L's. See, in business, we're willing to take L's, right? We know to make money, you're going to lose a little bit sometimes, right? But in relationships, are you willing to take the L? Are you willing to apologize even though in your heart you don't feel like you're wrong? Are you willing to have the soft response in order to have Amen. The, in order to have the relationship you want? Because if it becomes you versus your partner, you're going to lose. It always has to be you and your partner against the issue. Right? So it's the two of you against whatever outside force or whatever communication issue or whatever financial issue or, you know, communication, you know, love ship issue that's happening. And we don't do that. We have war with one another. Doesn't work. Where was you at 10 years ago? I was doing this work 10 years ago. <laughs> issue. I have a question for you, Ty. What do you think? that help you in your relationship with Aaliyah? Like, or, and, and maybe that could also be helpful for other women for us to hear. Like, what do you think it is that we do? Because I feel like I'm probably a lot like my sister. You are. Uh-huh. What do, what do you feel like, how do you feel like we could show up better? Well, I just feel like you, we could to have more understanding of, you know, the, your partner. You know what I mean? Your, your partner ways. So, you know, me, I'm a, 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 I, best, I study her ways. So I study things you know, that she might not like or things I need to get better at because we all got things we got to get better at. But if I point it out to you, things that you have to improve on that's affecting me and affecting my mental, I expect you to work on those things and get better at it. And if you don't get better at it, it's going to be still come, become an issue within our relationship. So I feel like things she could do is what she's doing now, getting therapy, talking about the issues and, you know, face it. And not, not miss me saying, like, I'm bugging. She understand that she got her things going on too and bringing me to it so I can understand her more. I think that's a step in the right direction, you know, for us. You know, I, I have a question for the therapist. You know, what is the fine line to compromising in a relationship and then changing who you are? Because that's a scary place for us, right? You think that you're, you know, uh, you know, I had one of the most toxic relationships play out on national TV. And I think I'm thinking that I need to work on myself and show more patience. But the person was running them up. A whole month plus some, you know, so it's like as women, sometimes I feel like we act this way because there is a deficit, like you said, because we're so traumatized. We don't know how to relax in the moment. Everything triggers every single bad thing that has happened to us. So we want to nip it in the bud and start ripping these walls down because I'm not to be played with. You will not. I will not go through this again, you know, and how do you decipher between the two? Because. When we when we go into this new word of narcissism, narcissism and toxicity, how do you know when someone really is there and you guys are working together for a goal, or are you just changing your who you are for someone to run them up? So I think the first thing that's a good question because I think I think the first thing that I want to say about that is we see things in the beginning, and y'all not gonna like that, right? But it's true. We see things in the beginning, but what we do is we look at the person's positive qualities and we put them up on a pedestal. 
And then we take their negative qualities and we sweep them under the rug. If you really want to know and do a heart check, you ask yourself if those negative uh, qualities are put on a pedestal, can you deal with that person? And then be honest enough and brave enough and courageous enough to say yes or no. Because what I believe is that when it comes down to interpersonal relationships, there are no victims. Oftentimes we don't want to see, right? Like I, I will be honest with you in my own personal like stories, right? I may not have liked how things played out, but I always saw it coming. So if we're honest, we know, right, exactly how things are going to end, right? But we have to really be real enough to see people for who they are. Compromise does not mean doing things that go against your soul and your spirit, thinking that it's going to work out because people only change because they want to, right? So it's also not looking at the potential either because we do that too. Oh, they got the potential too. Guess what? I can have Beyonce's body if I exercise 12 hours a day, right? I don't have it, right? So the reality is, can you really deal with who's in front of you right now as they are right now? And if you cannot be honest enough with yourself to say it's time to go or say I'm willing to compromise with them where they are now, not the person that you have idealized them to be in your mind. Because we do that, y'all, right? We build people up, right? We have all of these, like, perfect partners in our heads, Mm -hmm. and we want to make somebody be what we want and need them to be. And it really is trauma bonding, as Aaliyah said earlier, right? And we want that person to fill voids and holes in us that only God can fill, right? right? Your partner is not... (laughs) designed to, be- to fill your holes i need to say that we got to really work on that in our relationships and our love shifts because we're sometimes feeling invalidated and not heard because you're thinking that person is supposed to be god no and that's, that's, how, that's how i got into a fight with the women on the zoom <laughs> <laughs> no that's how it happened because i was saying that there were certain things that were happening and i was like that's really not for me to resolve it wasn't for me to resolve. I'm a part of it because you're sharing it with me. But some of those things you have to now resolve on your own. Sure, right? That wasn't what the fight was about. Yes, it was. <laughs> Show <Sure> was. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to put on my robe. She know. Yeah. <laughs> she trying. Someone get her one, please. So. Now, the issue was in our relationship. So Angelo in our world, right? this distinguished attorney, right, that folks look up to, you know, even, you know, our friends that are from street people to, to, they look up to and give reverence to him. And I was the formerly incarcerated woman. And some of those people were judging me because of being formerly incarcerated. So secretly, they was telling him not to be with me. They was telling him, run for your life. She's going to give you problems. Right. And it hurt the hell out of me because some of these people were my friends. Mm. Right. But he didn't listen to them. Wait, what's up, baby? What did you do? You speak in sign language? It's happening. <laughs> no, because when you're talking, you're proving my point. It's Hold fun. on one Go second. Ahead, do your thing. One second. Put on your robe. Until one second. <laughs> so the issue was, you know, it hurt me. Not that he hurt me. He actually stood up for me. He actually made me respect the hell out of him because he stood when they told him to go. And I've been... That's real. Clap it up for you for that. And it also... It also helped him change your life, too, but that's a whole nother segment. Change your life, too? Yes, it did. Sure did. Mm -hmm. Life changes. Let me get my robe on. And you not. Like, go back. All right. So the issue was... Those were friendships that I cherished, and these were people I admired and respected and looked up to, and it hurt me, right? But now it started triggering all my trauma. It made me feel like I wasn't good enough. It made me feel insecure, right? And then I'm looking at these people, and I couldn't really be friends because I know that they wasn't really true to me. And it hurt me, and I shut down, but I'm grateful to have him because he helped me to heal through some of that, right? Now, what the argument was about. That's what I was in. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He said I should get over it. That's the argument. Is that the argument? That was the argument. It was not about him. This was about me getting over what the people had done to me. And I am getting over it. I'm, you know, I'm healing. But the lady. Let me tell you why I said. They were upset because they said you don't have the right 
to tell me when to get over I, But I do. Le- but I do. Listen, listen. Take a deep breath. Put on your robes. Ladies. <laughs> Put on tough. your robes. Ladies. Put on your robes. We have, please. Tell them to get on their robes. Put your the, robes. They have from the <laughs> This is the thing. Put it. Like, someone got their robe on. Thank the Lord. The thing is this. The, the, the thing is this. I'm not telling. I can't tell anybody what to do. I even say that to my daughter. I'm like, listen, love, you have to do this, do this. And I, the older she gets, I always say, you're going to start making decisions that I can't save you from. Mm-hmm. I tell her that now. I said, you, you older now, you're 12. I can't stop this decision from meaning this now. I can help you when it happens, but soon your decisions are going to have consequences for you that nobody can save you from. Mm-hmm. You're 12. Imagine when you're 40, 50 years old. What I was saying to her really is, and the thing I try to share is that if me and you are doing something, why do all these other people matter that much? Right? If me and you are doing this thing, why do all of these other people matter that much? Because I didn't let it matter. I could have. I could have let that matter. Right? So part of it is also wanting someone to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to do this in the relationship. I'm now expecting you to meet me halfway as well, too. Right. Everyone else's perspective shouldn't mean that much. And if it does, then that means my perspective is diminished in this relationship because all these other things matter more. And and as some audience, and at some point, and at some take your rolls back off. No, but at some point, what happens is that's a lot of a burden for a relationship to carry. Now I have to carry how you feel about all these other people and how they think about the relationship. We have to create a new thing. That old thing and thinking can no longer work here if we are creating a new thing together. And if we're not, if you're not ready for that, then you're not ready for that. Okay, but I just want to say this. It wasn't about the relationship. It was just about how they did me. So now this is triggering my trauma because I'm thinking you're my friend. I'm ready to lay my life down for you, Mm -hmm. but you're telling my man on the low to run for his life, right? So it was me dealing with that. That that was because they're not really your friend. So let me so let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. This is important. So, Jamila, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, so here, here's the reality. Betrayal can never come from an enemy, only a friend, right? So once you have been betrayed, I think in hearing what just happened, I didn't hear that it's hurry up and get over it, right? Because I think that everybody has a different shelf life. But it's important to recognize that getting over things just like forgiveness is not a feeling. It is a decision. We wait for our emotions to catch up with what our mind is saying to do. And I want to tell you not to do that because it may take a very long time for that pain to go away, right? I still have childhood trauma pains, right, that come up. But I make the decision that I am moving forward from that. And so it's having the discipline to train your mind to not allow your thoughts to go off the rails because it comes up and it kicks up your trauma. Those people were not for you feel grateful because that means they won't be able to stab you in the back when you're even at a higher level and move on. And let me just say this last thing. The water robes is on. Let's talk while the robes on. Right. Put the robe back on. But part of it for me too is in the context of those other relationships or when those things happen, because sometimes things will happen or she'll be sharing something and I'll be like, don't say nothing in my head. Don't respond. Don't do it. Don't say what you think. But part of what happens is even in that moment, what I'm seeing is not just the thing you're sharing about what happened. I'm also seeing why you even allow that to happen. Get it? I'm seeing you want friends. You care about how people make you feel. You value this relationship and the nature. And I'm like, this is going to get you in the same trouble. So part of what I'm saying is be be mindful here. B- 
because otherwise you're going to walk down that same path. Because what happens? Protection. That's what happens that's to us. Protection. We usually make the same mistake over and over, and so that's part of what I was like. They, they not your friends like okay, that. Okay, so I, I'm gonna let you get. Just, just go ahead, get clap it up for them. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you go ahead, and I and I love you. <laughs> Hold up, Jimmy. I got something to say. How <laughs> However, I think that I learned that folks weren't really my friends, right? You know, I have my best friend in the audience, but also Angelo is my best friend, right? So we we navigate through life together. And I don't, I'm, it's not like I'm thinking about this stuff all the time. However, if we're in a conversation about something, I'm going to be triggered. It was kind of like the situation with Aisha. I wasn't thinking about that until we sat on the couch and I got triggered. So the real the reality of the situation is, I've moved on, I'm okay. But at times, it's kind of like what they talked about with grief today, that you navigate through that thing, right? It doesn't just fully just go away. So you have to ask for what you need. So that means the thing you say, you know, Angelo, I just need you to listen, yeah. right? Angelo, I need a hug. Yeah. Angelo, I need, you know, a bag, because I need to go shop and feel better about this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's a lot of <laughs> she got money. Get all the bags you want. <laughs> she got money. What is that? Right? But it's, it's that. It's that part, right? It's the asking for what you need in that moment part. I ask him sometimes. No, but I have a question, too. What happens? Like, for instance, let me start with this. You made a statement about her. Like, you know, she probably didn't even know. It took me. You can know people your entire life and think they're your friend. But it took you your entire life to find out that they never were your friends. So with that being said, I'm asking you, even in like relationship wise, like when we stand up and we voice what we say to our mate, and he still do the opposite of what we're saying because he doesn't feel that it's um, his choice or it's like you're taking the choice from, away from me and you're making it your own or you're making it about you and it's not about you or for instance, if your mate feels as though, like, listen, this is where the direction that I I have for myself set. And I know before you came here, before I allowed you into my life where we got together, I had my own vision. So how do we merge our visions in together no matter what? Because he had his vision, I had my vision. But when I got with him, I kind of put my vision on the back burner and start for, no, 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 say no, it's a good thing. His vision was way better than mine. Wait, <laughs> hold on. Somebody say Don't amen. Say no, yet. <laughs> amen. I didn't accomplish so much with his vision. So what I'm saying is, but how do we get back to that circle of life where it's okay now? Let's do it together. Your vision, my vision, coincides together without you feeling like I'm taking over your vision, or I feel like I'm unappreciated and I sat back and you know let your vision flourish because. First of all, like we said, in our situation, he has done 15 years in prison. He has not been on the street that long, but about five year anniversary, January 19th. You know what I'm saying? 2019. So yeah. oh, I'm sorry. that's the love right there. That's your best friend. That's when you know you got a best friend. I got two best friends in the audience, but it's my best friend too. But um, yeah, so what do you do to get back to that circle of partnership where your vision now can come back on the forefront and you don't want to feel like, you're overshadowing his vision. So I think the first thing is to understand, Aaliyah, that it's about being in the same book, not necessarily always on the same page. Right? And I think that we really sometimes... Look at Come on. I'm going to as we need it. Right? You're not always going to be on the same page, right? So it's long as you're in the same book and what I mean by same book what is the ultimate goal and vision right whether it's something material whether it's some type of activism you guys are doing what is the goal right and then how do you then use your skills to get to the goal right because in order to be successful you two like you said right he did 15 years etc you didn't so you have skills he will never have so you have to be comfortable, right, working in those areas that he may fall short in and then vice versa. Tut, because you did do those 15 years and you're alive and well and sitting here with us because it's something to be said for that. Right. Yeah, right. Sure. Seriously. Yeah. And you're not in it back in or in the hospital somewhere. Right. Facing 100 because, years because of that. Days. Right. You have skills that she doesn't have. So it's being able to be confident, both of you recognizing that you need both skill sets. 
right? See, we always want to be in the seat, right, of, of, of bossing and turning and being in control. But guess what? Like, a true leader leads from behind. If you're a true leader, you lead from behind. So that means you know when to fall back. That's that the word. means you know how to play every role you need to play so that the ultimate goal and vision is accomplished. And so there is no ego, right? There is no concerns about, well, I put mine to the side or you did. It's no, there is no mine and yours anymore. There is ours, and it's yeah. all about the vision. And that's good. Sometimes I think in our relationship when things are – Operating at its optimal is when you're taking turns. When you're taking turns. Because we like to say that we power bond, right? There's things that coming together enhance both of our lives. Because there were things that we had that the other one doesn't have on their own. And I think when you acknowledge that, you can do a lot. You can do a lot. One thing. I don't have a ring, okay? You so got two I, rings. Oh, no, I don't have a <laughs> ring that I'm supposed to have. So I think for me, also, a trauma with Angelo, and we haven't really done this lately, but I don't know if y'all do this, right? So, no. Well, hold on. She got wings. Hold on, let's just talk about this, right? And I know somebody can identify with me. Me and Angelo's dad fights with each other, and the first thing he gonna say is, I'm out of here, I'm leaving. Somebody in the audience know what I'm talking about, right? That's a tr trigger for me. Right? Because if you could just have an argument and you out, right? <laughs> or I didn't ask to be here. You feel me? You trapped me. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I trapped him. Oh, you trapped him? Yeah, but I did. What? what? Uh, whoa. But, Lord but, have mercy but on the soul. Whole, the whole issue with that is now you're triggering my trauma. Right? So when you tell me stuff like you could break out and it's, oh, all right, then. I mean, luckily you've been you doing a little better. Because I ain't really heard that lately. But <laughs> I've heard it. I put on my robe. But, no, I put on my robe. But never told listen. about that robe. Let me, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> let me tell you what happened. I haven't, I, and she knows this, I haven't been in many relationships that have lasted long. So I'm the kind of person, the minute something's happening and I feel like it can't be reconciled, I'm up out of there. What am I doing with this? Because if I feel like we can't figure this out, I'm not staying around for nonsense. So that's why when we had conflict, I'm like, listen, champ, if we can't figure this one out, gotta go, gotta go. So it wasn't, it wasn't really to say to somebody, I'm leaving or you're less than. It was more saying we can't get an alignment and I'm not the type of person who sticks around for that. Okay, but guess what that did to me with my trauma? Sure. Now that's making me feel like I, like you have to put some plan B, C, D, E, yep. F, and G, because any day he might say he going to go. So now I'm unsettled. I'm not sure. feeling protected. I'm feeling unsure. And then I got to get my emotions ready, because if you say he got to go, I got to be ready to be all right. But the thing, about, the thing about it, that's, the thing about life is that's deepest, because this is the thing too, right? I would never say that if you don't trigger me. So there are things you are saying that's making me saying, ma'am, can we do this? I'm not trying to trigger you, but there's things you actually said that made me say perhaps, and I want to be honest because I know some women be like, he never told me this. Ah. So I'm like, we ain't going to do that. Ma'am, you said this. Perhaps we can't do this. To be honest, not to trigger you, but because I want to have an honest conversation with you and let you know what this makes me think, right? right? And it's to your point. For me, let's talk about it, call it out, and then see what we can do, okay. right? Let's call this out, and let me be honest, too. So now we've been in this relationship. It was going on four years. What? We live. Yeah, she's been out no four years. It's been three years. It's three and change. Ma'am. talking about After three and change, we go to four. After three goes what? Four. Let's stop playing. Okay. We done traveled the world together. We built businesses together. We got all kind of homes and things and material stuff. And you don't sound like a wife. says things. But I don't understand why I don't have a rent. I didn't. I, I don't. You guys, too. That's. That's. Not that's, on the right finger. Angela. That's triggering for me. Sure. Because it's making me feel like, all right, so is he playing? And I'm getting older. I don't know. Somebody in the audience might feel like I feel. I'm getting older. So what are we going to, are we, are we are, I don't want to play. 
I don't want to be your girlfriend. I'm over right. So maybe, so maybe that's your trauma right there. Your trauma might be slowing her. Let's wait, hear from Judge. Wait, wait, no, but but what? But no, everything we've been going through is not trauma. Yeah. Like we compromise. And we have to learn you. You guys have a huge responsibility to learn us. And it's not all trauma is what we want. Right. And I think that's where it, it, it gets I a little I want tricky. him to make a commitment. Jamila, I love you and I want to be with you for the rest <laughs> of my life. Period. I love Period. you, Jamila. Exclamation point. <laughs> well, it for. seems like many love you here. You have all the love <laughs> in the room. You? No, 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 no. Well, what what's your tech guy to say about this? Yes, you feel, what do you think? <laughs> this, is, this is how I feel. All right. This is how I feel, right? Flo well, don't like that. You, re- you need to give me the ring and stop playing, right? You thought that we was married? Lord have mercy on a soul. <laughs> Mic drop. But uh, listen I this. not married. I didn't throw her shoes yet. I play white duties every single day. No. And I do not have the ring. Come. <laughs> but listen, this is this is the thing, though. Let I me say, the I say the, you got the cow, you know, gave away the milk for free, and now we don't. I'm no, sure this, you want to pay this is the now. thing. This is the thing. This is the thing for me personally. Ty, ty, titles don't mean that much to me. Oh, boy, boy. <laughs> Can I finish? <laughs> Can I get a shot? Put your robe up. Hold your robe up. Friends, friends, I'm trying to help you all. No, but listen, listen, I'm being, I'm just being honest. And part of it, I'm just being honest. And, and not only that, for me as a man, I don't know, Tut, if you feel the same way. It's very risky. I'm just being very honest with you. Well, hold on, wait. It's very risky. And let me, well, listen, the, yeah, and this is the other thing, and I said this to her, and this is how I feel. Tell I don't know if you feel the same way as a man. Well, got to get some help. Need an ally need help now. But no, but seriously, I think for men, some men, I don't want to speak for the whole species, but for some men, I know for me, I was always reluctant to get into a relationship. So for me, I'm not a person who's rushing into a relationship under any circumstances. In fact, I don't want to do it. If I can help it, I don't want to do it because it's too risky. There's all the challenges and trauma that come with it and problems. And I don't want to do that. Now. That's how I feel as a man. Hold on, is all. But listen, hey. but listen, but listen. So for me as a man, by the time I get into a relationship with somebody, I made a very serious commitment, a very serious commitment. <laughs> right. And listen. And this is how I feel, and maybe you women feel differently. I feel like many women want to be in a relationship. And as a result, it's easier for y'all to get into them, right? As opposed for a man, it's very hard for me to get in a relationship. So by the time I get into it, my relationship level is high when I enter a relationship. So how you feel about marriage, that's how I entered. I entered that high level. And I feel like, well, maybe, perhaps. Better put a ring on it. This is the thing. Let me tell y'all something. I'm gonna give y'all. I'm gonna give y'all a, a, a serious gem right here. This. I'm gonna give y'all a serious jewel. And I don't like to say this. I don't like to say this, but this is my. This is a serious jewel for me. I don't know if you feel the same way. Too. If you're in a relationship with a woman, what that means is there's hope. No, listen. Wait a minute. Is listen. This a die segment. Listen. No. I'm being very honest. I'm I'm just trying to be honest. They're jumping and help him. No, right. listen. Let me let me finish. They, they let they can, listen, they listen, listen. The thing about it is this. I'm just being honest. I'm being honest. Right. What is your fear of marriage? I don't have one. But listen, the thing is this. I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not afraid of anything. Well, then why don't you do it? Because you got to listen. So the thing is this. Just like you said you want marriage or whatever, I know in my mind, the, this has to happen, this has to happen, and then I'll do that. Yeah. What? All right, so 
Hold on, can I try to just say one thing? So how do you feel about what Angelo is saying? No, this is all I, I, well, I understand. You gotta this, come this, home tonight. This is what I understand. Only thing I understand what you're saying, brother, is this. We have to let relationship happen organically. We can't we can't force it. And then sometimes when Right. So, so like all women should be married. Like all women are queens and and, and we gonna we gonna find that moment in our life where we're gonna meet that woman. And these might be the woman right here for us, but we're going to know that moment when we're going to go to that store and buy that ring and surprise them with that. We're going to know it's going to be something they did in that moment that helped the relationship continue to improve and improve. And now you feel comfortable with saying, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. Because that's not no simple, easy thing to do. I know y'all want it, want to look good, had a ring, you got the husband, but you want the right husband. Because you can get married and then you be divorced uh, 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 a year later. Yeah. Or you get married and somebody just cheat on you. So you want to make sure you're marrying the right person and not speeding that process up. And then I feel like a lot of our issues come with within our relationship come from, like you said, all our trauma and some other y'all don't want to work on y'all stuff. Y'all want us to work on ours, but then y'all don't want to work on y'all's. And then a lot of y'all's to trigger ours. Cause if you got an issue, your issue gonna become my issue. If you keep complaining about something that's going on right now, we're gonna get by that. Like he was saying with her, that that, that whatever whatever was bothering her started to bother him when he let it go. But she's still on it. And he like, just let that go. And now he don't want it. It frustrated him, so now he's like, all right, well, until you get that together, then y'all still got to deal with that. So it's going to be stagnating in the relationship and stagnating in y'all trust of each other because of your trauma and then the trauma that we have in our past relationships. And, and I think the point of it growing organically is, for me, when I think about it is, to get to this new place, we can't be how we looked when we entered this. We both would have had to have grown in a new place to go to a new place. But hold on. <clears throat> in an instance, one thing, one thing, he just said that. In an instance, right? Even if you never had multiple relationships, right? Who fault is that? That's yours, right? Because you chose that, right? So it's not our fault that we are ready for the readiness right now and right now. Okay. But the problem is, is that what we want, it sounds like Y'all don't want it right now. That's and not we true. didn't put in a lot That's not of true. That's not what's being said. We put it, listen, listen, hold on. What's hold being on. said is you could have it now. Right. When? You could have it right now. What's she asking for? No, the, the thing is. All right, so my help. rope is off, and I know we got it closed. No, up let the second. therapist share. I'll be I, interested I do, in I hearing. Do, I do have just one, one other thing to say, because, you know, men will say, you know, again, uh, women's trauma, women's trauma, but they're not sharing their trauma. So we, so that we are more compassionate and we understand more. It's it's a mystery still. So we're fighting. Even sometimes I feel to understand more, so that we can be uh, better to the men, the men that we're with. I just say this: I was in prison for a decade. I lived out of a locker, right? I never could be make it my home because I knew I had to leave, yeah. right? So I'm with this man who I love like every with all that's in me. But I'm living in my locker, right? Because he hasn't made me his home, right? So I'm in the locker and I got my things in the stand. And I'm able to live out of them like I lived in a prison for nine years. But because the commitment isn't all the way there, at any given point, I'm ready to pack out my locker and I got to be willing to move on because I don't know that I have a home. So it's really, really a, a, it's a, if it, it's really a messed up place because I don't know what this is or isn't because he's not really fully making a commitment. So okay. we let it. And my perspective is, and my and my perspective is, the second I got into the relationship, I made the commitment. Okay. So maybe you don't see that, so, but the second I entered the relationship, exactly. I made the commitment. Exactly. And what that tells me now is, you're born, you're not as committed as I was. Okay. So I entered here, so, and you're. So, the peanut gallery okay, could talk, okay. but they can say okay. whatever they want. But and I just I, all right. So at least Ty I, wants listen, to know how many people. The, 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 the producers are asking me to wrap this up, right? Because this is about healing, right? Producers are always so. They ain't ready. We, we will see a lot of them. We're gonna have to do a part two with a close set, but what? This one that'll be part three. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, oh yeah, part three with a close set. But just one of the things is right, and just seeing what just happened, it's a communication issue. It's a communication issue. That's all I see, right? So so it's not a lack of love, right? It's not a lack of commitment that I'm seeing, right? It's a communication issue. 
What I want to say to you, Jamila, is that you talked about your locker, right, and comfort in home, right? But marriage doesn't make home. And it's important that you understand that, right? Because many people thought it was a home for them, right? When they stood in front of their family and then they had to stand in front of the judge and get a divorce, right? So it's important to recognize that it's much more about the soul connection. It's fine to want the institution. Right. I, I think that that is amazing, right? Yeah. But the question isn't, why are, you, why are you not doing this? I'm acting like a wife. I'm doing. That's not the question. That's not the communication. This is what you said. I'm going to help you right now, sis. Angelo. Mm, we've been at this now three years. Okay. It's going good. We got homes. We got businesses. Things are going good. True. Okay. What do you think is stopping us from walking down the aisle? That's the question. Great question. Mike Drew. Great question. That's the question. Not because when you bring the other parts in, it's hard to focus in on that. <laughs> Great question. Right? Right? That's the question. That was so a good we were, question. So that, so that, so that, what I just demonstrated, and for for um you guys as well, I need you to say it one more time for us, <laughs> right? So, so for you guys, right? It's so. Yeah, yeah, but I gotta say yeah. before you say that real quick, he only been in one other relationship. He only had two girlfriends in his entire life: his baby mother, or whatever, and me. But the thing is, is he has trauma from that last relationship before he went to jail for fifteen years. So now he's home and he doesn't trust. Because he loved her so much. Okay, so let's talk about trust for a second because I want to help you guys with this. Y'all not going to like this. This is important. This is important. This is important. It is never about trusting your partner. It is never about that. It is always about trusting yourself. Oh, that's good. All right, because you that's cannot good. control. Being in a relationship is about being vulnerable, okay? You do not. Listen, my daughter is in this audience. And if you ask me with a gun to my head, does she love me? I'm not going to answer the question. And it's not because I don't believe in my heart that she does, but you don't know what's in the heart of any person towards you. So it's very important that you understand that you are not to put your trust in anyone. You're to put your trust in God and yourself. So when a person's behavior does not align with what you feel is love, then it's time for you to move forward. So if you ask me the question, I would say I Great feel job. she loves me because of she says it because of how she treats me but I am not going to be foolish enough to say I know that she loves me and we do that in relationships we want people to perform for us and do all the performative actions to prove that they love us it's not about that it's not about that all right relationships are not about filling your voids mm -hmm. they are about what you can bring Amen. so that you can further what the two of you want Amen. so it's asking the right question in the right way I love like this. She talking. Oh, right. You need she to be a resident expert. We're we going to bring she the back. a good day. We are going Thank to bring her back. I hope she that talk, That was good. Yes, yes, yes. I like that. Oh, wow. So audience, clap it up for yourselves. Wow. Thank you. Thank we you. love us more. An amazing episode. And we're going to leave on this note to always remember to love yourself more. Next season, we coming back bigger, stronger than yes. ever. So if you got that story, sis, if you know the story that we need to cover and we need to tell, tell it to us, DM us, put it in the inbox. Make sure you join the community and have a great day. I love you more. There you go. Randy. <laughs> Therapists agree with me. <laughs> yeah. I have I'm toxic. I, 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 I'll stay in my lane. Yeah. Man. 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 Let's let the women talk. Let's hear what they got to say, the audience. I think they got some good stuff. No, no. We, me, and my, me and my sister here was sitting <laughs> That we feel like you two guys should start a show yourselves and bring on more guys and more women and more couples. Actually, you understand? Because I think it would be so dope and it would just shoot because I love him. He is like, he's so like real. He don't let nobody back him down. He's not going to back down. He's not doing none of that. And I love that. So, the change makers. Change makers. <laughs> change makers. Guys. I, it's just great. It's just really great. Next question. Next question. 
got a question. Is it on? Hello? <laughs> I thought y'all was married. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know. Married. But I'm, I'm just going to. That means I'm walking in the. But I don't. I don't want y'all to. I don't want y'all to take this home, right? To me, my own personal self, just saying this to you as my friend, my sister in life, and Angelo, I love you to death too. Regardless of y'all married or not, y'all walking that path together. I've seen so much from the time that I met you back in 2017 from 2024 now. The growth, not only within you, Jamila, but within you guys together, right? You know, when yes. when me and my husband had our things and, you know, y'all was doing therapy because you gave me your therapist. Like, you and Corey need to talk to this good old therapist right now and work out through y'all things. But next season, I want me and my husband on that stage because, baby, he got trauma. He did 13 years in jail, and he owned him too. I'm the only relationship he's ever been in. And he did two years in solitary confinement. Try 24 hours lockdown for five or six years. Yeah. One hour shower. Yeah. My facing a death penalty. Too. And and he's still struggling with therapy. We just started couples therapy maybe like two months ago. And we only did two sessions because he don't want to go back. <laughs> we don't want to go back. So we need to be up. Guess what? Guess what? Jamila didn't want to go back when we went. <laughs> That's a story for another time. Uh-oh. <laughs> for That's another question, time, question. Bro, anybody has the last question? Her robe. She didn't have her robe yet. You got your robe now. Last question. One more person. Last question. Go ahead, sis. Can I ask a question? Okay, so I know Jamila very, 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 very well. And I just want to say this, and where I, I do commend her. It's a question and a comment. When we came home, Jamila said, I'm not getting in a relationship until I find a person that I feel is going to honor me for me, right? And I watched her be alone, you know? I watched her patiently wait, and I knew that when I saw them together, I said, oh, he must have every quality that we spoke about <laughs> because she's not the type to just jump into any relationship. So I just want to give a little bit of advice to somebody who's recently gotten engaged to someone who I never thought would propose to me, you know? He's got quite a few baby mamas, um, he did a lot of time and he told me, he t took a long time for him to tell me that he loved me. He said, I need to see you in every capacity. I need to see you happy and know that I, I'll enjoy that. I need to see you sad. I need to see you depressed. I need to know that I can handle every part of you. So I'm just telling you to give you grace and patience. He seems like a great person. And I think that there's going to be that moment where he wakes up and says, this is going to be my wife. You don't rush it. You just be you. And let him love you for you, and, and your time will come. I, I feel it. I feel very That's confident. That's good. Receive that. You know, so I commend you, and she ain't always the easiest. Person. Well, thank you. <laughs> Someone got to say it. So, I know. I'm going to talk about our friend. He has to make sure that he And my sister. And a man has a lot of responsibility. And we all talking about we want men to pay bills, do that. This is a lifelong commitment. Yes, yes. It's not to be played with. So, you know, yes. Yeah, so. I so play plenty. For a lot as women. So I'm just saying to you, I have never met you, but I know who he is because I know who Jamila is. And I know that he's a special guy. And just have a little patience and grace with him. And I think that y'all have a very happy ending. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Um, I first want to say that I appreciate being here and that um, I love love. I just recently got married and my husband is locked up. So marriage is a lot of things. Marriage is not easy. I'm going through this by myself. I'm newly married. We was married five weeks before he had to go in. Um, I had a lot of friends because we got married kind of fast, like within 18 months. We've been together now for three years. But I had a lot of people telling me you shouldn't get married because he was ready. He Muslim. We both Muslim. He was ready to get married in three weeks. If I would listen to all, and it was older people, if I would have listened to them, and not listen to my heart and myself. Well, I was getting mad when he was trying to talk and explain himself and the whole crowd, because we females, we be in our feelings and we, ah, like, don't listen to nobody. Follow your heart, listen to your man, be with your partner. I cut everybody off because it was married women asking me, you don't have a friend yet? And I'm looking at them like I have no support. Like I don't have support from people who want me to stay married or even want me to be married. So. I'm secluded. Like, I'm a, 
uh, abolitionist now. I'm a freedom fighter. I'm this, I'm that. I'm keeping myself busy because I honor my marriage and I love my husband. So, yes, honor. great job. Your partner. Like, block all that other stuff out because people want to have a, a, a perception, a position on what they feel. But at the end of the day, when them doors close, it's you and them. Like, I'm locked up. I'm doing this time locked up. That's how I choose to do it because I love my husband. And it's going to be some work. He going to come home. I'm trying to stack some money because I know the mindset he has, but that's my part. That's what means something to me. So, like, put your robe on. I had to put my put husband on, but I went on. through a period of time that I healed from other relationships. I'm going to have to keep mine. And then when I got with him, he didn't have nobody like me. But when he got with me, he honored me because I was different. So, like... Like, I was mad at y'all. I was like, oh, they should stop this, make these people go home and just let them answer. <laughs> so, for real, because black love is beautiful. It's our family togetherness. We need that. We don't have that. We have people hating. We have people coming for us all types of ways. Like, love your partner. Don't worry about what nobody said. Honor your marriage. We don't have people out here trying to honor their marriage. We have people running, doing other things. So love your partner, be patient with them, and you will communicate. That's that's what I got. He don't know how to communicate. If I left it all up to him, we probably wouldn't with his communication. But I have patience. So I have patience for your partner. I try to understand them and learn communication is the most powerful thing on earth besides love. Like communication is important. I know how to communicate. I did not know how to communicate ten years ago. Ten years ago. I wouldn't be married. I couldn't be married. Them alpha female. I was. I ain't never marrying nobody because of everything I perceived from what I seen. But when I seen him, he seen me. We seen each other. We love each other. So that's what's up, sis. Stuff like these. Yeah, clap it up, y'all. She had them, but she had a robe on. <laughs> she had a robe on. Who the last one? We need a good one. Good question. Good questions. Come on, talk. Hello, hello, what's up, y'all? Oh, what's up? Um, that's my sister. I just, yes, yes, everybody my sisters, you know, sister, we call each other sisters and brothers. I just really want to tap in. Definitely, you know, um, I was thinking about, like, more on the mental health, just watching and listening to, um, I, I, I forgot to name Aaliyah. Her. Dr. Uh, Letitia. When I think of mental health, I feel like I carry, like, vic- vicarious um trauma, like, just growing up with my mother being in the mental like institution just growing up. And when I see how she's like operating at a high level like that, I definitely want to get her um, information because it was a lot of things that was just sapped. And I feel like we all need to be a sister that can relate like we just talked about or whatever. Like I have I have been through things where I tap in and talk to certain people, you know, but for some reason it's just something that the whole time I just kept saying this lady with the peep is doing something to me. And sister, whatever you, like you, I heard you say 26 years, you definitely been applying it. You could tell the way you just was like, like I felt, just felt so genuine. I feel like love. And I feel like. Thank you, Doc. That was good. You in this role, and that you should take. Without the fact that y'all in this role today and hear from the two therapists that came and talked about what therapy was. How many of y'all want to get some therapy? Oh, wow. <laughs> it helps me. That's some good help right there. That's healing, ladies. That was the purpose of this whole thing. That was the purpose of why we did and doing what we do. So guess what? If you haven't already, make sure you join the community, blackwomenslivesmatter.com. You join our community. And every single person in this room who said that they want to get therapy, I'm going to make sure you get the therapy. Yes, Jamila. Okay? That's my commitment to you because that's why we did this work. But they this, the be work of this work. podcast was to destigmatize, right? Getting help. But what we learned is that when women see that help can come from sisters yes. that look like them, that can identify with them, and that there's a purpose for it, they want it. So you guys clap it up for yourselves because that's what this was all about. But I just want to add to that, Jamila, that they got to be willing to do the work. Like if you're if you're willing to provide the services, we gotta show up and be able to do the work. That's what's that up. means That's reevaluating good. yourself every day. When you go home, think about what you do that you did throughout that day or that week, and what ha- what can you do to make that better? Because a lot of it it relies on us. 
A lot of times, but, we, you know. But, but therapy is good because somebody's putting their attention on you. Absolutely. So I feel like once folks get in the chair, they're going to do the work. Because they're going to be hearing about themselves. Right. They're going to be hearing a difference. So right. you're usually hearing everything about everybody else. Right. When you're in a chair with the therapist, it's all about Absolute. you. Absolutely. But it's a friendly reminder. Yes. That there's still work yeah, to do. Yeah, but there done. is still work to do. There's still work all to right, do. All right, clap it up for yourselves, y'all. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So if you haven't already, make sure you're in the community. And our next after chat is on Tuesday. Tuesday. So this Tuesday, every Tuesday, Show we up. have... Um, just like what we have now, Sister Circles at the Shawnee Baraka Center in Newark, right? At the Prince Joshua Avita Center, P. Jack Center in Brooklyn, and at Greater Nexus in Queens. So we have three locations on, and we on Zoom talking to each other. Like, it's a thing. So please stay with us. This is not just a fly-by-night yes. thing. We are committed to this work, and we love y'all. Thank if you, you need us, out. we Shawnee Baraka Center. Come see us. Yeah. I'm busy loving myself, putting me first Now that I know I deserve more I'm busy loving myself, putting me first